and then thank you all for making the time to come out to the Capitol to visit and, um, and to make your voice be heard on the importance of supporting our governor as he has uh, pushed forward with the support of the House and the Senate. It's one of the strongest pro life bills in the country. I have a hard act to follow with Senator Emory because, as always, he covers the bases very, very well. But I am humbled to serve in the House of Representatives with my client, my colleagues behind me, as well as I see Representative Veep out in the audience. Um, there's a lot of good people that serve in this body with a lot of diverse views. But the night that we sat here praying and waiting for the Senate to take up and make that final vote and send it back to the House was a night that will go down in the history books for many of us, especially all of all us here. But for, for, for as a member, I, uh, those that know me know that I like to play the piano at night. And that night is they were negotiating that bill and going through the steps of figuring out what was going to be voted on. I sat at the piano and the song that kept coming to my mind was, I have decided to follow Jesus. And as I began to play that song, um, as a person of faith, I could just, I felt like I could feel the battle in this building that night. And I sat at the piano and those words were going through my mind. As I began to play them, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. And my mind went to the babies that this bill is all about. The left tries to paint this argument as, as though we are taking away women's health care. House Bill 126 is simply about protecting the individual lives. Protecting the individual lives that have equal rights under the Constitution. I uh, got many messages, as did I'm sure all my colleagues, of, of what we might call hate mail. Um, folks saying this and saying that. And as legislators, we have an absolute obligation to respect constitutional rights of people to speak contrary to the decisions that you might make and to say whatever they want to say. But in one particular conversation, with someone who opposed the bill. I asked them the question. I said, how can you ask me to consider an unborn woman's life any less than a born woman's life? And the conversation pretty much fizzled out right there. Because that's what it boils down to is as men and women in today's time, leading our families, leading our communities, the decisions we make today set the tone for the men and women who come after us. And uh, in one of the votes on House Bill 26, I remember House Leader Viscovo stood at the back of the chamber at the mic, and he is someone who has been adopted. And he asked the body before we took the vote, he said, how many more of our future leaders are we going to kill before they have a chance for the future? How many more Hillary Clintons? How many more George Bushes? How many more Barack Obamas? How many more of these, these people that could have led our country that, that have written history before us, that will write history out after us, you know, we, we have to give these unborn children a chance at the future that they so greatly deserve and give our nation a chance to experience the precious value of the lives that God has blessed us with um, through their existence. But I just want to encourage you guys because you being here matters. But not only just being here matters, going back home and articulating why you came here Going back home and articulating the why that this is important matters even more. Uh, I got home from session and walked into my place of business, a little ice cream shop, and the lady that runs it for me while in the session turned around, and I hadn't seen her all week, and I was tired, I was a little griping, that old night stand. I don't know how the senators did it, I just sat there and I was worn out after that. But she turned around to me with tears in her eyes, and she said, Hannah, I hadn't talked to you much about this this week because I didn't want to tell you over the phone. And the tears started coming down, and she said, thank you for fighting for my son. And I said, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. And she went on to tell me that the son that she had adopted, the mom was on the way to the abortion clinic, and she was on the phone with her and persuading her to turn around. And she said, Hannah, it's something that's very private that I had never shared much, but she said, I'll never forget that day when that birth mother chose life for my son. And she said, now my life is blessed because of that choice 
And I called her this morning. I said, can I share what you told me? And she said, well, absolutely. But I sat here today and I think, you know, again, I think about what the opposition to the pro-life movement might say and have said in the past and what they will say in the future. And I want to remind you that this bill is about the moms back home working the hourly wage job who's raising their son that almost got aborted but didn't. This bill is about the, the, the future leaders. This bill is about the people who can and will change this country for the better and pick up where we leave off. And it's not just what we do here, but it's what we do with it when we get home that probably matters more than anything. So thank you for the invitation to be here and keep up the good work. And it is an honor to help bring a voice to the, um, to the table for it and for children in the state of Missouri. So thank you very much. My name is State Representative Sharif Wilson Reich, and it was an honor to be a part of the 100th General Assembly to pass this historic legislation. I want to particularly thank in the House Nick Schroer and all the ones that had the amendments onto Bill 126. Also, we need to all thank the governor for signing this legislation. I am an older grandmother, and I can tell you I lived through the 70s and the 80s, back when women were lied to that they were just a blob of cells. It was not a baby, it was not a child. Women have told me over the decades since then how they regret having an abortion. They weren't aware of resource centers or people that would help or even at that time without the internet, places like Medicaid and places that could help you to raise your baby. I'm thankful for this legislation because in the Bible it says that God knew us even in the womb. And as the now Missourians will all be given the right and inalienable right for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you.
victories that we've made. Don't lose your commitment to protecting life because until the day that we no longer have abortions in this country, I'll never waver in the fight for life. It's an honor and privilege to serve as the 57th Governor of Missouri. Thank you and God bless. Sincerely, Michael L. Parson, Governor.
defending and protecting the women of Missouri. Medically, this could not be possible. 
I was fairly certain that when my doctor advised me years ago that I could not carry a full-term pregnancy, I was certain that that was true. I began to think if pregnancy was the case, how selfish it would be to add another person to this world. I knew that abortion was the only option. I scheduled my appointment. I knew that this was going to be a very hard choice. I wondered if I could even handle it. Every bone in my body was against the decision that I was about to make. But regarding the circumstances, I absolutely could not do this. I did not know the direction to take or the steps to follow. So that's when I reached out to Corrado. I was alone, I was scared, and I was very confused. Upon reaching out to do these things, I came across this resource. And I found that they were willing to help. And I was simply just searching for assistance on how to kind of go through this abortion process. I prayed that I would get the answers that I sought that day. And on that chilly January day when I went to Corrado, I got that answer. I got a heartbeat. There was still no way I could give birth to another child, let alone carry it for nine months. I figured that I would be guided in the direction the desires of my own personal situation. So I agreed to postpone the abortion until further counseling. I was struggling in many different aspects of my life. I spent many nights in tearful prayer and contemplating what the Father's plans were for me. Now, fast forward two years later, here I am. And this beautiful baby boy that holds a very special place in my heart. The Lord has blessed me with the strength to be his mother. And those seeds were nourished by Thrive. Like, I can't even read. The physical, emotional, and spiritual work was very draining. I specifically typed this so that if I cried, I wouldn't miss a beat here. I learned that anything can happen to anyone at any time. Things change. And sometimes they change later in life, sometimes in early adulthood. Sometimes God gets our attention through very difficult circumstances. But more often than not, God brings us to a very desperate moment for our own deserved consequences. My story is not unique. There are men and women that have faced, been faced with the ever-challenging decision to choose life and parent daily. Most of them because of situations they partook in. I credit every one of them. I hurt for every one of them. I cry for every one of them. Because I know how much of a very difficult choice it was to be a parent again. I chose life. I chose hope. I chose motherhood and the acceptance of the gospel in my life. I know that many other women have the strength to do that. To, to say parenthood is easy is an understatement. It's a battle at the very least. I had to build a bond with a child that immediately loved me. A child that I did not want. I had to learn to love this very special person. Things are still very hard, and I struggle. But I have faith, faith, hope, and many things that are ahead. I've been allowed to live a life more beautiful than before. I have learned that through the trials and tribulations, we gain the education to be more Christ. My son continues to grow. He is so smart, he is loving, and he is very handsome. He is the light of my life. I love him more than he will ever know. He has recently began to see mom. That helps my heart. Son has given me the best gift I could ever receive, and that is mine. He has made my heart beat. The heart that was very certain to end a life on that chilly in January day when I went to the ground. So I just want to say thank you guys very much.
lawmakers who work tirelessly and courageously to pass this Make Up for Life bill.
the battle, this battle is won. The next battle is to close down Planned Parenthood in St. Louis. That is the next battle. But that doesn't mean the war is going to be over. Oh, I'm sorry, you all can sit down. You can sit down now. I just want you all to take a look around at each other and see. Can you all sing a song with me? And you need to be loud. Can you all sing a song with me? Are you willing to? Do you remember? See, I'm a little bit unconventional, so. Do you remember when we were growing up, we were singing the song, Jesus Loves Little Children? I want, and, and when we're singing this, I want everyone to sing loudly. I want everyone in this building, seriously, to hear this. Because Jesus loves every child. Red, and yellow, black, and white. All are precious in his sight, whether they're born or unborn. If you all now, black folks like to say, oh, I can't sing. And they get up there and start singing, like, incredibly. Well, I'm going to tell you, I can't sing. And I really mean it. I can't sing. So I'm going to need you all to help. Jesus loves the Lord. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. We want everybody in this building to hear you. Let's bolt it out. Jesus loves the little children. Oh.
the Department of Health and Senior Services, and in particular, Dr. Randall Williams, a stalwart defender of women's health and safety.
glad to be alive. This is my story. I was conceived when my birth mother was abducted at night point by a serial rapist. She went to two illegal abortions, and I was almost aborted. She backed out because of the condition and the fact that it was illegal. She was happy to meet me when I was 19, but pro-choice when we met. And she told me that if abortion had been legal, she absolutely would have aborted me, telling me that it should have been my right. And she maintained that position for the next six years until she changed her mind about abortion. And because I was protected, she's able to change her mind and have a relationship with me. And now, decades later, more than 30 years since we met, we are both so thankful today that we were spared from the horror of abortion. If your mother chose life for you, how nice for you. That must feel wonderful. But mine didn't. She chose abortion. But pro-life legislators chose life for me. And they are my heroes. And I literally hold my head. I owe my birth to the legislators who protected me, to a governor who protected me. And I am so grateful for today's modern day heroes here in Missouri who, have, who are protecting innocent children who deserved love and light every bit as much as I did. Thank you so much to all of you, to all of the senators and all of the state representatives and to Governor Parsons for protecting women like me who are going to be able to enjoy life just like I've been able to. I am an attorney and I am the founder and president of Safe for One, which is a global pro-life organization made of over 800 of us now who were conceived and raped like me yeah. and mothers who became pregnant by rape who yes. are raising their children or birth mothers or miscarried or regret aborted. And on behalf of everyone at Save the One, thank you so much you. for defending life without exception, without discrimination, without compromise. We're so grateful to Missouri for this example you've set here. And um, I'll tell you, the last few weeks have been very difficult for all of us, hearing the rhetoric, getting called horrible things like rapist child. I'm not a rapist, rapist child, I'm a child of a rape victim. And what it is to all of the mothers who love their children, to characterize their child in that way. I'm grateful that you also passed a law recently to protect rape victims and their children from the rape victim. Protecting 
the innocent, without exception, without discrimination. In footnote 54 of the U.S. Supreme Court's opinion, in Moe versus Wade, the court pointed out the fact that Texas had exceptions and exemptions, and that this undermines the state's whole argument for personhood. Because the right to life comes from the 14th Amendment, where it says that no state shall deprive a person of their right to life.
because in some abortion supporters, in some abortion groups that have their way, birthday candles for some of Missouri's unborn children will be snuffed. They will be blown out permanently. Because you see, last week, two separate pro-abortion groups, one of them being the ACLU of Missouri, and the other group funded by a wealthy businessman, they filed referendum petitions to delay the effective date of House Bill 126. And the, and the bill, for most of it, goes into effect on August 28th of this year. Well, they filed referendum petitions uh, against what is the strongest, most comprehensive pro-life bill that we have ever had here in the state. And if they have their way, and if they get enough signatures on those petitions, House Bill 128, House Bill 126 will not go into effect on August 28th. I need to explain to you a little bit about referendums. It's provided for in our Constitution. Since 1914, here in Missouri, 27 bills have been placed on a vote by referendum petitions put out by citizens. It's allowed uh, in, in our law. Of those 27, 25 were defeated. 25 were, in essence, vetoed by the voters. The most recent one was in 2018, when lawmakers overwhelmingly asked for right to work bill. I'm not asking you to take a position for and against white work. That's not my, my point here. My point is that we have a recent history here that a right to right, right to work bill was put on the ballot and it was defeated two to one. In other words, any bill, any bill like House Bill 126, which is placed on the ballot for an up or down vote, has a 93% chance of being defeated and never becoming law. So we're talking about if they get the petitions, the law does not go to on August 28th, so babies will not be saved. And it gets put on the ballot, and if more voters vote no, they vote yes, it will never become law. So this referendum drive by abortion supporters is currently the greatest threat to pro-life laws that we have in Missouri. Now, it is good news that yesterday, Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft rejected two of the three referendum proposals. So think about what I'm saying here. Yes, it's cause to celebrate. But what if our opponents are successful in getting the signatures and then not getting us in the votes, the yes votes for three to our one? Unborn babies who have a heartbeat will not be protected in the jersey. Women who are injured by abortion doctors will not be able to get the compensation because of the malpractice requirements that were added to House Bill 126. Now remember, lots and lots of things were added to this bill. This is one of those obvious constitutional state bills. Everything that you do to protect women, everything that you do to protect the more children was added to this bill. They'd all be gone. Pre-born children who can experience pain will still undergo the horrors of being dismembered in a room, live by limb, if our opponents are successful. Unborn children with Down syndrome who will be protected in this bill, they will not get the protection they deserve. Or even unborn baby girls who will be afforded solely because of their sex. You know what else will happen? The tax credits that are going to have in this bill to benefit our pregnancy centers. We have 72 pregnancy resource centers. We have more pregnancy resource centers in Missouri per capita than any state in the country. It's a long They will take God out of the law. And I 
I need that penalty. Because if you're going to build on page four of the bill, I have it right here. You can read it. The very first line of chapter 188, chapter 188, chapter 8, chapter 8, all, all, essentially all of our virtual laws are right there. One of the very first lines that are walking under is just this year line. It says, in recognition that the mighty God is the author of life. That's a pretty self-evident truth, isn't it? Now we add it to the law. That would be taken out of the law. God would be taken out of the law if this referendum is successful. The Declaration of Independence would be taken out of the law because elsewhere on page 23 it says, the purpose of the government, the government is to guarantee that those who are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights can enjoy life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We all recognize those words. Those were added to the Council of Those would be taken out of the law. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that happening? So please keep paying attention to this referendum plan. The fate of thousands of Missouri's pregnant women and their unborn children is at stake. Now there's no one who's like a citizen at the moment, but if they start doing so, everyone you know you must be told, don't sign the petition. Don't sign it. By every means, everyone I mean our fellow politicians, our church members, our family members, our friends, everyone that we hold, because they have to get about 100,000 or so signatures to be now on this committee. We must do everything in our power to stop that from happening. Now, as things develop, uh, war will come out through various collective attention from social media. But in the meantime, I ask, I plead with you to pray that these referendum attempts are a failure, and we also should work hard to make sure that that prayer comes through. Thank you very much. Thank you. 